Okay, here we go. The video I promised, finally. This has been an insane drama trying to do this. What I said I would do is demonstrate how to adjust the backlash out of this thing, and that I would explain why you can't actually get rid of the backlash. When I said about doing this, I also mentioned that I had um, my lathe had developed a little knock back and forth here, and I wanted to investigate that, so hey, I'll do it at the same time. Well, I investigated that and promptly found this. The adjuster is broken. So, how do we get another adjuster? And this was all like last Thursday or so when I was starting to do this. I thought I'd be done that night. Well, I wasn't. <laughs> I had to make, I had to get this part and sorted. So it's not a, it's not a part I can buy, but it is a part I could make. I have a mill. And it's a new mill as I replaced my previous one with a bigger, fancier one. And <laughs> so first that's broken. Then I set up the mill to try and machine a new one. Discovered that the mill had the wrong drawbar in it, so none of my tools fit. Uh, getting the right drawbar with the right, right thread it has to come from Australia. So that's two, three weeks away. It's taken forever these days. However, the drawbar on my old mill fits and is the correct thread. So I can't sell my old one now because I'm using the drawbar. After that, I started making one of these. I just pulled out a piece of steel out of the um, drawer. It was about the same size and I started machining and I thought, oh, this is nice. Okay, looking good. Going to get there. I'll cut it down and then, oof. I can't make it out of steel, can I? Of course I can't make it out of steel because it's it's meant to work on a steel thread which is here this thing and you can't have steel on steel it'll wear out in no time so I looked into I researched that and decided well well I was looking at this bit here actually and I thought because initially this this confused me I thought it looked like steel right and I did give it a scratch, and it seemed pretty hard. But now when I look at it again, I think it's obvious it's cast iron, and the way it's broken off is cast iron, that kind of crack. And tell me, you tell me, you people, do you think there's any way that there would have been enough flex in this piece here to let it move? Because there's an adjuster that bites down on this top edge and it bends it backwards in order to tighten the th tighten down on the thread to take up the backlash and there's there's the there's the lesson right there but this is cast iron and it's halfway up the slot is cut only halfway down to the thinnest part of course it's going to break i mean that's designed to break it may be manufacturing fault maybe this cut was supposed to go further down who knows so then i had to figure out what to make it out of in a deep dive in the forums you get as far as people making um, nuts out of delrin or acetal plastic, and they take two halves and they, they they cut the thread, they cut it in half, they squeeze it onto the onto this rod here, and then they heat up the rod so it melts the acetal, and then they take that off and cut it up and they mount it some way, and that gives them a no backlash thread for this part in any case, which is very interesting. And because it's the plastic, it actually, you can move it. You can't do that with metal. It's not going to move. So that's an interesting thing. But I wasn't about to do that. I just wanted a replacement nut. And I had a mill. I could make it, so let's make it. Uh, ideally, it should be made of bronze. But I tried for three days. I couldn't get any bronze. So then I thought, well, it's going to have to be brass. So I started making one out of brass. Soon discovered that the thread here... It's an M10, fine pitched, so it's one millimeter pitch, and it's left-handed. That was the next drama. Where am I going to get an M10 fine pitch left-handed tap quick enough to actually make this and then carry on with the video? So I found a place, found two places, and one of them had it, and they got it to me overnight, which was great. So I said about happily making this part. I got as far as drilling the hole... And then the mill gave up. It just went me, And it wouldn't start. And the mill, of course, is brand new. It's under warranty. And it comes with a warning. 
you get your warranty if you do not fix it, right? <laughs> I had to wait until Monday because, of course, this happened on the weekend. So that was the weekend gone. And then on Monday, I rang them. I made a video of it. They were good about it. And they said, send us a take the back panel off and send us a photo and a video of what's inside. And when I went inside, yes, I, f I could see three fuse holders on the cir one of the circuit boards. So I got back in business again on Monday afternoon after I got those fuses and set about making another one out of brass, this one. Basically the same thing again. Five three, pretty much. Quite good in there. Very nice. So we're a tick longer. We're the same width, and we're a tiny tick taller. That's 12, 18, 18.1. Pretty damn nice. Boy, I really chewed into that brass. So that's where our hole's gonna be, there. Look at that nice thread. Right, so to drill through, I go in one centimeter. So I'm through, and that there is the limit. Twelve point oh six still. Okay. I guess not. Good.
um, the original was like that. All right, done. Okay, just to wrap this up, I've got my new nut in there and I did a whole lot about the adjustments, but I'm just gonna, it's just too long winded. So let me just try and summarize it here because it just gets crazy. Um, there's three things to adjust the backlash in the top slide being the one that goes back and forth or the cross slide. That's top, that's the cross, isn't it? So that one going over there has three things that make it go sloppy or tight. And you gotta do all three of those and you should do them all without the others in the picture. So they should all be done separately at first, starting with the entire slide on the dovetails. And to do that, you, once, you take a little screw out of the back of this cross slide screw and back in there, it's got a washer with it little Allen key and you take that out and then you can go like this and you can wind it all the way off. Take it all the way off so that you've just got, here we go. And now I could undo these two and this piece would just come out. And either while it's out or while it's in with that off the end, probably do it while it's in there, um, you want to adjust this backlash here. And that's suggested through this, this nut, this whole piece here is a nut and it's got three grub screws, which when you have the nut in the right position to take up the slack, you then lock it in place with those three grub screws. It's hard to do. It's in my stripped down video. I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Hard to do because of the fact that you're tightening those down onto a thread. It's quite a coarse thread. And as you tighten it down, this nut wobbles because it's not a tightly fitting nut. And when it wobbles, it upsets your smooth movement. And so I ended up just going, I took it all apart. You have to punch out a pin there to take this handle off. And I greased it all, cleaned it, greased it, put it together, and then put this nut on and tightened it up. You go all the way on, make it nice and tight, and then come back a bit. And then start going, well, at what point do I have no backlash? no lengthwise backlash. It's a bit hard to tell because it also flops that way, but that doesn't matter. It's only the exact linear back and forth that matters. And uh, as you tighten this down, when you find the right spot, as soon as you tighten one down, it goes off, it offsets, and then that stuffs it up again. So you end up going tighten, 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 and back and forth and back and forth. And you just keep going around until you've got everything in the right position and got it reasonably tight. It doesn't have to be over tight. It's just tight and flat so it's not wonky. Not easy to do. There's a piece of brass inside each hole, a little brass bushing thing, and that's designed so that the grub screw squeezes down on the brass and the brass squeezes down on the threads. So the brass doesn't screw up the threads. Of course, once you've squeezed it down once, those, those bits of brass have a pattern from the threads. And then it's always trying to get back into that pattern, which is not good half the time. So it all becomes a bit of a pain. But do that with it off. If you had this on, you'd never be able to get it right. So do that. Get that sorted. Um, this bit here, you could take this off. And it just pops out. There's only two screws. Just take it off, put it aside, clean it and lube it. And then you can slide this thing here back and forth with your hands the whole cross slide. And while that's sliding back and forth, be aware that the nut here will hit this edge. You could take that off if you wanted. Um, and you go back and forth until it's, and you adjust this screw and the one at the back so that that wedge, it's a long strip in there, it has to be held between those screws with no motion at all. If that is able to move back and forth, even a fraction of a millimeter, then it will lock up in one direction and release in the other. It'll lock up and release one way or the other. It's a pain. So that's hard to adjust as well. You've got to go back and forth on those. It's very difficult once you've found the right spot to, um, 
tighten down this nut. You can't really do it. <laughs> the way I did it was um, once I had my things in like that, I think I held a blade in there and as I found the right spot, I would then just go back and forth, pushing that around with a pointer, something like this, like that. And then you reach a point where as you tighten it up, it drags that nut with it. And so you just go back and forth, back and forth, tweaking this on and at a certain point it grabs that. And as you turn, it tightens that with it. It was not easy either, but it works. Main point, no slot, no slot back and forth. The, the wedge needs to be held in one spot exactly. And it mustn't be pinched either. As you'll find, you'll notice if you pinch that wedge, just even one tiny little bit. So it's almost like the wedge distorts and locks everything. Very sensitive, very sensitive, hard to do. But again, you have to do that with the whole thing without this in so that you can feel it. And it should be, it can be firm, but it should be no movement and it can be firm because once once you're using this to move it, it's actually a lot lighter because this is, this makes it seem like that's not as tight as it is. Uh, keep it oiled while you're doing it. So that's two, one, two. And the third then is the bit that I've just spent this whole video making. And that's that adjuster nut for the cross slide screw nut. There we go. Come on, in you go. There we go. So I've installed that. I've mounted it straight. So it's not twisted one way or the other. And this feels pretty tight. It feels good. It actually feels like this, which I always had a bit tighter than this one, because this does not have a nut with an adjuster nothing at all and it's got these gib screws which are really crap as well and so this one here to keep it to keep it from being floppy is pretty tight so that was always tighter well now this one is about the same as that not a bad thing and the amount of backlash i'm getting is under two of those are not well two notches one and a half to two uh dividers there I used to get about this much, about 10% of the 10% uh, of the uh, turn there, but that's quite firm, and that's with this this adjuster, the grub screw. Now it's backed off. It's a little bit looser, and that's just the the, the screw in the new nut. That's how firm that is. That's actually quite nice, but there's going to be a little bit of slop in there and you can grab that and you can feel that and that's just the screw inside the nut you can get rid of that by tightening it up like that oh, that was that oh. a little bit more god i don't want to tighten that up too much i don't want to screw it up but now it's locked so what's the point <laughs> you can't even move it at all so we'll take it off to where we can move it around about here and I can feel it firming up I'm going to do about that and then we've got three I could go tighter I could go down to two but three is fine that feels nice and if I'm working and I need some extra firmness for any reason, I can just go tweak and just do that. So there we go. That was the adjustment or the potential ways to take out backlash in the cross slide. Three ways. None of them are great. <laughs> They're all really hard to adjust, except perhaps that last one. That's probably the easiest one to adjust. All right. Thanks. Hope that was of some use. Bye-bye.